to do to me in this life but one thing i know for certain i hear my name calling hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah are you on the roll or will you be marked absent glory be to god What is the state of your soul? Glory be to God. The Bible said, blessed is the man whose transgression are forgiven. Blessed is the man whose sins the Lord has covered. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. There is no repentance in the grave. No repentance in the grave. Make sure your soul is saved. Roll call, brothers and sisters. Tonight, glory be to God, I am sounding the alarm. Roll call, roll call, roll call, roll call. Roll call, roll call, roll call. Roll call, roll call, roll call. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Glory, hallelujah. I am heralding the trumpet. Is your name written there? You have time, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Set the foundation right. Set your life right. Set things in order because there is coming a day when the books will be open and another book will be open. And if your name has been blotted out of that book, then eternal damnation will be your portion. You will have to live forever and ever in a state of misery, knowing that you got the opportunity, knowing that somebody just came to you and said, Oh, 
preach the gospel, but you turn up your nose. You say them mad. You say all sorts of things. Roll call, brothers and sisters. Roll call. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Glory be to God. When God pulls out the book, Mando Shekataridiosa, and looks at all your deeds, all your wickedness, all your cruelty, all the bad words that you said against that brother and sister, all the bad things that you did, glory be to God. That is one book. And when he takes out the book of life, hey, I don't see a name there. There's no provision for you, glory be to God my prayer tonight is that that will not be the case of those that have heard this message glory be to god hallelujah so we are back again another night we're almost there we're in chapter 20. we only have two more chapters to go glory be to god hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. We praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're going to be seeing quite a lot in this chapter. I am going to urge you as per usual, please have your Bibles ready. And tonight you need, well, all other nights you should have had your notepad and your pen. But tonight I want you to grab a pen, grab a notepad, because there are some things um. I'm going to discuss, I want you to write them down, uh, speak to the Lord, read through the scriptures, and have it um, speak to you. Praise God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, over and over, right, in the gospel, especially in the book of Matthew, we see that there were several parables. Jesus always spoke a parable to show people what the kingdom of God was like, right? In the book of Matthew specifically, he went about preaching a message. And what was that message? Repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Glory be to God. So the kingdom of heaven came near in the form of the Messiah at that point. Glory be to God. And then again, it says in the said book of Matthew that when he sent out the disciples to Israel, he said, the message that you should preach is that the kingdom of heaven has come near. Glory be to God. And then again, in the book of Mark, he says again, that the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. And then when we jump over into the book of Luke, we see that he is proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. And then he puts this statement, because that is why I have been sent. I want to tell us tonight, those that are the sent ones, those that are called by the name of Christ, the reason that you have been sent is to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, is to proclaim to that one that the kingdom of God, especially now, is near glory be to God. It is to proclaim a message of repentance and of the kingdom. Half of these message that messages that we are heralding in the church, while they are useful, is not what God had, Jesus himself had done while he was on earth. His main message was about the kingdom. It was about the kingdom. It was about the kingdom. So our pulpits need to have more of those messages about the kingdom of God because people need to understand that it is indeed good news and that it is indeed near. And if it is that we do not act, we will find ourselves in a position we will see later on in the text. Glory be to God. So looking now in the book of john that famous passage do not let your hearts be troubled you believe in god the scripture says believe also in me glory be to god 
in my father's house there are many mansions and if it were not so jesus said i would not have told you but i am going to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare that place then i will come back and take you with me and you will be with there be there with me also so when we look at all of that even when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. He taught them to pray like this. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is about heaven. So why am I going on and on and on about all of these scriptures? We're going to see that a little bit clearer. So, so far what we have seen in the book is that the prostitute also called Babylon, has fallen. That system has been judged and that system is no more. We saw the return of the triumphant Messiah on his white horse. Glory be to God. And he defeated the beasts, the false prophets, and those that came up against him. Glory be to God. And now we are going to see the kingdom being ushered into the earth. Hallelujah. Now, why I want you to get, I, I need you to get a pen and paper because there are many different aspects in this, in this uh, one chapter. So the kingdom is going to come in two stages. The first, you'll have the 1000 uh, year rule, also called millennial, millennium reign, however you want to put it. That's a thousand years where Jesus will be reigning on the earth. The second is that the new Jerusalem will be ushered in. The Bible tells us that the old heavens and the old earth that will pass away. How we knew things will not be the same. And a new heaven and a new earth will be in place. And the kingdom itself will come down from out of the heavens. And the kingdom will be here on earth. Glory be to God. So for those of us who think that we are going to spend eternity up in heaven, as in, in the, the third heavens, well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but that's not what the scripture speaks of. Heaven will actually be on the earth here. Glory be to God. So take out your Bibles and turn with me to Revelation chapter 20. We're going to be reading the first three verses. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Then the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed, loose, set free, for a season. Let us stop and discuss these for first three chapters. Now, the book starts off by telling us that John sees another angel and this angel is coming down with a key to the abyss. It's the second time that we have seen an angel coming with a key to the abyss. We saw that in chapter 9 and we saw when the abyss was opened up or the shaft what came up out of it were uh uh locusts um scorpion like looking locusts and many other demonic creatures now we are seeing this angel he has the key and he also has something else in his hand it is a great chain glory be to god a great the bible says chain which while we don't ascribe 
power to the, the devil, we ought to understand that indeed he has some level of power. And in order for him to be bound, another angel has to come and do that. Glory be to God. It takes divine presence. Glory be to God to bind the, the, the devil himself. Glory be to God. So the Bible tells us that he comes with a key and he comes with a chain. And another thing I want you to see is that God is in control. He has keys that closes and open. And the abyss is continually shut. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So what does he do? He seizes the devil and binds the, 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 the scripture tells us, gives us three description of, of the devil. Three names, the dragon, as we have seen before, the ancient serpent, as we have seen all throughout the Bible and especially in the book of Genesis. And the Bible says also called the devil. He throws him into the abyss, locks it and seals it. And why does he do that? He does that to prevent Satan from deceiving the nations. Glory be to God. What is the most, what is it that Satan does? He deceives people. And how does he deceive people? He deceives by causing doubt. When we look at uh, the book of Genesis and we see the story of Eve, what the devil did was to place doubt in Eve's mind and cause her to commit sin. Glory be to God. So whenever we find ourselves in a position where we are doubting what God has said, doubting the word of God, doubting the will of God, doubting the way of God, we ought to know that we are in a place of deception, that Satan has infiltrated our minds and he's saying to us, did God really say that? That is how Satan operates. And we see from that, from those first three verses, that he's going to be confined for a thousand years. For that thousand years, Satan will have no influence over humanity at all. It will be the Messiah, Jesus, the Christ, that is ruling and reigning for that thousand years. But the scripture also tells us that after that 1,000 years, Satan will be revealed or released. Sorry. Now we're going to look at two concepts. The concept of the millennial kingdom a little later in our study. And we're also going to look at why it is that Satan had to be released. Come with me again to the text. We're reading from verses 4 to 6. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Verse 5, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Verse 6, blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now let us unpack those three verses. So if we look in the book of uh, Hebrews, uh, chapter 9 and 27, it tells us that it is appointed unto man once to die, but after that, then the judgment. 
So that brings us to the, dis the discussion of first and second resurrection. So let us look at what the first resurrection or the first death, sorry, is. So the first death is a physical death. Glory be to God. So that's a physical death. And what we see here in the scripture, the scripture is speaking about first resurrection also. So in order to be resurrected, you would have had to die. Glory be to God, right? So there are two groups of people who will be in the first resurrection. Please follow me. Two groups of people. These two groups of people are believers who will be in the first first resurrection so the first group of people are those that have been raptured right that's the first group and follow me to first thessalonians 4 verse 13 paul says to the church we do not want you to be uninformed brothers and sisters i'm putting the sisters in there concerning those who are asleep so that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. So back then they thought that um, the, 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 the issue was whether or not those that die would have, would have seen the face of God. So he says, since we believe that Jesus died and rose again in the same way, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep through Jesus. For we say this to you by a revelation from the Lord. We who are still alive at the Lord's coming will certainly have no advantage over those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, the Bible says, will descend upon the heaven with a shout. The Bible says, some, some says in the clouds, with a shout and with the archangel's voice and with a trump of God. And the dead in Christ, the Bible says, shall rise first. Glory be to God. Then we who are alive will be caught up. Hallelujah with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we be with the Lord forevermore. Glory be to God. So we're moving on to the second group of people. Amen. Those who have lived on the earth during the reign of the Antichrist but they did not worship the beast or its image or take the mark on their foreheads or their hands, they will come to life and reign with Christ. So that's the two group of people that will be in the first resurrection. Now, the second resurrection, which you will see later on in the passage, and it's mentioned here in verse 6, is judgment and eternal death. Meaning that one does not have a relationship with God. That one did not hold to the testimony of Jesus Christ. That one possibly took the mark of the beast, glory be to God. And so they will receive the same punishment as we will see Satan um, received later on in the text. So this is what verse 5 is saying, that the rest of the dead, they will not come to life until after the thousand years. And we will see later on in the book what happens when they come to life. Glory be to God. Now, let's look at verse 6 a little bit closer. This, I believe, is our fourth beatitude. It's a fourth blessing. 
and it says, blessed and holy is he that has a part in the first resurrection. Why? Because the second death has no power over that person. Glory be to God. If you die in Christ, you will live, you will come back to, to life and live in eternity with him. The book of John says, do not be amazed at this because a time is coming when all who are in the grave, they will hear hear his voice and they will come out glory be to God those who have done good things to the resurrection of life but those who have done wicked things to the resurrection of judgment it is a sad case for somebody to live their lives doing wicked things and die in a state of 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 what i would call wickedness and out of covenant with god because as i said earlier there is no repentance in the grave i cannot pray you into heaven that is something you would have had to done you would have had to succumb or submit yourself to the rule of god you would have had to be redeemed by the blood of jesus christ there is no repentance in the grave so while there is time, get on your knees, get in a position of humility and say, Lord, I am a sinner and I repent. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Per adventure, you have done this already. It is important that good things be in this book about you. It is important that good things be in this book about you. So for those of us who have nothing good, let us get busy. For those of us who aren't doing anything for the Lord, let us get busy. For those of us who aren't doing anything for our brothers, for those of us who are not our brother's keepers, let us get busy doing the will and purposes of God. Remember, I'm, I'm remembering now the scripture that says, when Jesus come, he will separate. Even though that is speaking of many things, the Bible says that one of the, dis the distinguishing thing of the separation will be this. I was hungry and you did not feed me. I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was in prison and alone, glory be to God, and you did not come to visit me. And the Bible says, Lord, when did we see you in this state and not help you? And uh, he responded, whatever you have done, mando to the least of my brothers, that you have done unto me. Uh, glory be to God. Some of us doing some things uh, are not doing some things uh, to the little man, to the other man, and we don't understand uh, that a book, radio uh, has been taken uh, and the pages are being written uh, of what of the deeds that we are doing in this life. Uh, we better be careful uh, of what we are doing. Glory be to God, because it is being recorded. Uh, in a book, my God, in the heavens, glory be to God. Don't worry about the pastor senior. Don't worry about somebody you know senior, but, but God is seeing you, glory be to God. And everything you do on this earth, it is being documented. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let us look at <clears throat> the question now. Why is it necessary for Satan to be released? Now, this is kind of, it's a twofold answer and parts of it are a bit difficult. So I encourage you to be like the Bereans. Hear what I have to say, document it. Search the scriptures for yourself and also ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth of the word to you. Glory be to God. So why does Satan have to be released? Why after good God Almighty, Lord, Satan has been doing so much on this earth. Now you lock him up, God. Why are you releasing him? Isn't that a good place for him to stay? Isn't that a, the right place for him? Well, the, to answer that, we have to look at two aspects. The first is, 
who will be in this millennial kingdom. And the second is the doctrine of free will. And this is why I'm encouraging you to get a pen and paper. So let's look at the first aspect. Who will be in the millennial kingdom? We know that it's for a thousand years. That's how we get the millennium or millennial. And we know that Jesus is the one that will rule, right? For a thousand years. So the first group of people that will be in this kingdom, according to scripture, is the body of believers. Those that are Jews and those that are Gentiles. Those that have submitted themselves to God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That is what the scripture says over and over. The second thing is, it is those person. So this first group of person, they have experienced the rapture as we have just spoken about. The third thing about this group of people is that they have received a glorified body. Meaning they have become like the angels, glory be to God. And the Bible tells us that angels are not given into marriage. They cannot procreate. So let us turn to 1 Corinthians 15. I'm going to pull out a couple of scriptures from there that speaks to this point. So 1 Corinthians 15, we're reading from... Uh, verses 42 it says so will it be with the resurrection of the dead this is about the dead first the body that is sown is perishable it is raised imperishable it is sown in dishonor and it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness and it is raised in power it is sown a natural body and it is raised a spiritual body. Glory be to God. And then he says, I declare to you, we are down to verse 50. Brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So in our fleshly state, we cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trump will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For the perishable must be clothed with, clothed with imperishable and the mortal with immortality. So what is that scripture talking about? It is talking about resurrection and the, the form of our bodies in the resurrected state. Glory be to God. And we know that Jesus is the first fruits of resurrection. And we know from the, um, from the Bible the, how his body was in a glorious form after his resurrection. Glory be to God. So the second group of people that will be in the millennial kingdom are Jews that come to faith after the rapture, but before the millennium, millennium uh, reign. And we know that because remember, we looked into the book of Zechariah and we saw where the text says that when Jesus comes the second time, that uh, they will look upon him and realize that they had pierced him and realized that indeed he was the Messiah. So that's the second group of people. And then there is a third group of people. Also, the book of Zechariah speaks about uh, people hanging on to the, the clothing of, of, of the children of Israel in, that, in those days. And this is when the Antichrist will be reigning because they will realize that God is with them. So these people have also come to faith. They're of the Gentiles, meaning they're not Jews. But they have come to faith after the rapture, but before the millennial kingdom during that time of the Antichrist reign. 
Now, biblically speaking, it is said that those from the second group and the third group, they don't have glorified bodies. They are still on the earth here. So they have never, um, glory be to God, experienced the rapture and have gone up into the heavens. So this second and third group, they are going to still be able to multiply and to procreate and to multiply glory be to God. So we're going to see another group of people coming out that they call the fourth group. Now let us look on. I hope I haven't confused you that much. Let us look on the doctrine of free will. Now, what is the doctrine of free will? It basically says that free will is the ability to make a choice without an external coercion. In other words, you are free to make your own choice. In the book of Deuteronomy, we see God places a law before Israel and he says, see, I put uh, before you this day, I put blessings and curse, life and death. Choose life. But he doesn't force anyone to even the fact of coming to salvation, it's your choice. So scripture teaches us according to the book of Isaiah 2 that the Messiah is going to rule during that period and he's going to rule according to the law. And it is going to be a period of godly rule. Now, please bear with me. I know this is, is, is not exciting, but it is important for us to know about these things. So, and then according to the book of Ezekiel, verses 40 to 48, there will be a new temple and there will be the resumption of sacrifices. Now, somebody might be saying, what in heaven's name is she saying? That cannot be because we know that the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth was all sufficient and that blood dealt with the, the sin issue. That is still the case. The blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth is a one-time sin offering. Glory be to God. But the concept is this. So prior to the Lamb of God, the sacrifices that were made in the earlier temple was pointing forward to the cross. The cross had not yet uh, been accomplished, right? So in the millennial kingdom, the sacrifices that is done will be pointing backwards to the cross. And why is that? These new group of people, they have to be able to use their will. They have to be able to exercise their will and to choose the Messiah as Savior. Glory be to God. It is still the blood of Jesus that atones. It is still the blood of Jesus that is the all-sufficient sacrifice. It is still the blood of Jesus that lacks nothing. It is still the blood of Jesus that speaks louder than any other sacrifice. But what um, is, is being uh, ushered in here is another dispensation or era that will allow these people to demonstrate their faith in the Messiah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So the people there will have the opportunity that you and I had to choose Jesus or not to choose him. In other words, we have grown up and we have seen that our mother serves Jesus. And therefore, when we get into trouble, our first instinct, and some of us are still doing that now. Oh, mommy, pray for me. Oh, grandma, pray for me. Oh, this and oh, that. But I want to let us know that, yes, grandma, grandma's God save. Yes, but you have to know God for your Yourself. Grandma's God.
God needs to be your God. You cannot stand in the face of God and say, but uh, my grandmother know you. What do you know of God? Where is your covenant? Where is your agreement with him? Are you married to God? Or is it the marriage that your parents have that you are depending on? If that is the case, I come to advise you tonight that it won't fly. That strategy will not make it in. Every man have to know God for themselves. And every man have to work out their own salvation. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You will not be called in front of the presence of God to answer. My God, your grandmother will not be answering as to why it is that you did not accept Jesus Christ. You will have to answer because even if you did not hear it from your grandmother or somebody close by, the Bible tells us that an angel will be going in the heavens and he will proclaim the gospel. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So let us get back to the scripture. We are picking up from verse seven. So, and when the thousand years had expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And we just dealt with why that is. And he shall go forth and deceive the nations which are at the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. Let me stop here and speak to this. Satan has been bound for a thousand years. And one would think that during that thousand years, he would come to his mind and say, "Ah, I cannot continue along this path. But no, when he came out, he was the same devil that he went in. As he came out, he went about to deceive people again, which is what he has set out his mind to do. And so it is that some of us as human beings, even though God has dealt with us in such a way that we see that it is really God, we come back from that situation and we behave as all we, we behave before. It's as if nothing within us has been changed. changed. The Bible says some of us conscience has been smeared with utter high and glory be to God. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen people who have near-death experiences and in the near-death situation, they're calling out Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then they say, oh, if it was not for God, I would not be here. And then tomorrow they forgot about the God that saved them yesterday. Glory be to God. And Satan, the Bible says, was released and he went back out to deceive the nations and to gather them together for battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now, Gog and Magog was a battle from the book of Ezekiel 37 and 38. And the most important thing about that battle is that the believers or rather Israel was successful glory be to god and this number of people that are as the sand of the sea it's coming from this fourth group of people they are going to can you imagine they are living in the millennial kingdom they are exposed to the rule of Jesus, but nonetheless, they are going to rise up against the son of God. So what does it tell me? It tells me that within us as human beings, there is something inherently evil. And if we do not submit to God, then we are going to act on that evil within us. Glory be to God. How can you be in the face of the master and still don't realize that you have a good thing going on here glory be to god it's because of the nature of sin it's because of the flesh it's because of the fact that man cannot save themselves we need a savior glory be to god 
The Bible says in verse 9, and they went up to the breadth of the earth and compassed the camps of the saints about and the beloved city. And this we know, the beloved city is Jerusalem. So this is taking place in Israel. And fire, the Bible says, came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Glory be to God. So remember in the days of Elijah, that was a different dispensation where Elijah prayed and fire came down from heaven. So now we are seeing that this same thing will be happening in that dispensation to come. Glory be to God. And the Bible says, verse 10, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beasts and the false prophets are and shall be tormented night, day and night forever and ever, the Bible says. Now I want us to pick up a strategy here. Notice how God deals with his enemies. He takes out first Babylon, which is a system of exile. Then he disables the enablers, which are the beast, glory be to God, and the false prophet. And then he swoops in for the killer and deals with the instigator and the mastermind, glory be to God. And as I was preparing for this, I heard God said, this is a strategy, glory be to God, for deliverance. We need to mash down, glory be to God, that system that has been, that has been erected against us to keep us into my God exile first and foremost in the name of Jesus. Then we need to bind and bound every enabler, every foot soldier, my God, every demon, and every 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 uh, what we call uh, soldiers of darkness. And then it is that we attack and deal with the strong man. Glory be to God. Could it be that we are not delivered from some things in our lives because we are not using biblically sound strategies glory be to god we need to ask god he is the mighty man of war we need to ask him show us god how to fight some of these battles show us your strategy of war glory be to god hallelujah we're looking now at uh verse 11 the bible says and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled and there were found no place for them my god even the very creation flees glory be to god at the face of the one that sits upon the white throne and the bible says in verse 12 and i saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open hallelujah and another book was open glory be to God which is the book of life and the dead was judged they were judged out of these things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up death which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and the death and hell were then cast into the lake of fire and this is the second death and whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life they were cast into the fire let us unpack that a little so the white throne judgment what is this this is not a place where the believers will find themselves glory be to god it is only for the dead those who have died over the ages and who have not submitted themselves to god and it is for those in this fourth group 
that have risen up against God, those in the millennial kingdom that have died and have risen up against God. The Bible says that the sea will give up their dead and hell will give up their dead. Even the earth, glory be to God. So for those that want to, to um, say if they cremate their bodies or sprinkle their ashes in the sea out of fear of the day of judgment, it does not matter because God will speak to these very elements and they will give up that one that is buried in them. Glory be to God. So everyone i need you to see this everyone will be judged according to your deeds the bible says according to their works i made the mention before there are books the bible says many books and in those books i i don't know if everybody has a book but like I have these various books and my names are on them and in them I write all sorts of things. That is how God has a book with our name on it and he's writing glory be to God uh, on this day, April 20th, 2021 or August 31st, 2021. Karen did this, Karen did that. Karen said this, Karen did not. Glory be to God. And the Bible says, when that book is open and your deeds are before God, glory be to God, what will be the result of, of that review? I know that my deeds, glory be to God, they are not worthy. By my deeds, I am not worthy to enter into heaven because it was only mercy that saved me from a wretched life. I was a rich, glory be to God. There were so many bad things written in that book about me. But the Bible says there is another book, Sata. It is called the book of life. And in some chapters, it's called the Lamb's book of life. And when uh, they search the pages, I don't know if they're going to be looking for me under Davis or Johnson, but by whatever name, if they look in Davis under D, they must see Karen Davis and her adventure. They are doing it by the name I am married. If you look under J, you must see Karen Johnson because glory be to God, I'm submitting myself to the will and rule of God. I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I am sprinkled with the blood of Ribio Sata and I am working my way to a full and free salvation. Sanctified Ribio Sata, clothed my God in deeds of goodness. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only way that you can be saved from hell, from the lake of fire, when your deeds are reviewed. And if there's any man that will say to himself that he has not sinned, that man is not telling the truth. I will not call anybody a liar, but they're not being truthful. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The only way that you can be saved is if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us that the dead will be judged according to their works. And if their name is not in the book, meaning their name has been blotted out, then their portion will be like that of Satan to be cast into the lake of fire. And the Bible says, and death and hell itself. Death, the Bible says, glory be to God. Let me turn to 1 Corinthians 15. Hallelujah. The same scripture we, was, we were looking on before. And the Bible says, 
um, I'm going down to verse 54. When Paul spoke about the perishable shall put on imperishable and the mortal immortality. Then he said, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Death, oh death, where is your victory? Where is your sting? Glory be to God. Because the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. Glory be to God. But thanks be to God that gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. In my preparation for tonight, I came to find out that the gospel, the Hebrew word for the gospel means flesh. And what that is saying is the gospel is that God visited his people in the flesh and he acted out redemption. So let us not be God came down in flesh. And he made sure there was a provision for redemption. Let us receive the redemptive power of God in our lives. Let us acknowledge that our ways before God isn't right. Let us acknowledge that we are a sinner. And let us acknowledge that we cannot save ourselves. Let us acknowledge that Jesus is a son of God and that he died and he rose again on the third day by God. Hallelujah. And that he did that so that my sins could be blotted out. Glory be to God. I want to close on this point. If you have received the blood of Jesus Christ, the Bible says that you are a new creature. All things have passed away. You are a kingdom creation. You are a brand new person. Glory be to God. So if you are a kingdom creation, your mind should be towards the kingdom, towards living out the standard of the kingdom, enabled by the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. So when we pray, oftentimes we ask for the spirit of God to visit us, my God, for power. But let us ask for the spirit of God, the God that made himself flesh, to visit us so that every aspect of our lives can be redeemed from sin. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Father, we just say thank you. Father, we thank you, mighty God, for the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for the greatest altar ever erected on this earth. The cross, my God, the cross, we thank you for the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed. We thank you, mighty Father God, for the, 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 the way, oh my God, of redemption, the provision that was made to save us. My God, we come before you, Lord, and we pray, Lord God, have mercy. Have mercy upon us, my God. Lord God, when we look at our past, God, our deeds, God, don't make us worthy. Our deeds, my God, disqualify us. My God, those things we have said and done in the past, even some things that some of us are doing now or we're doing now, God, they disqualify us. But God, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. Lord, have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you even now, my God, for as many, Lord God, that are hearing this word, Lord God, we pray that by your spirit, Lord God, you said that you wish none should be lost, but all should come, my God, to everlasting life. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that one, my God, will come home, that one, my God, will come home. Oh, the overwhelming love of God, Lord, let your love chase 
that one down. Lord, you have said in your scripture, you leave the 99 and go after the one. Let the love of God chase that one down, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we pray for the hearts of people. We pray, we pray, God, you say the hearts of men are desperately wicked. You say, my God, that our heart, there is a heart matter. God, I pray that we'll allow you to circumcise our hearts, circumcise our flesh. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we know more than ever that we need you, Lord God. Our dependence is upon you, God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you, my God, and my King, and I lift up, my God, those that will come to hear this word. I pray, my God, that their prayers, Lord God, will ascend to the heavens, Lord God, and I pray, my God, that, the, that you will grant their requests in the name of Jesus according to your will. Lord God, I pray even now that you'll step into some homes, my God, from Zion, the gospel is about her. God, you manifesting yourself in the flesh, coming towards humanity. Even now, God, manifest yourself in the lives and the homes of your people. Manifest yourself even in my home now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, redeem every areas of our lives, my God, that sin, oh God, has taken a hold of in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless you. Father, we worship and exalt you. We thank you, my God, that you're a God that hears and answers prayer. We thank you, God, that mercy goes before your face even when you sit on the throne, oh God, to judge. Lord God, I pray for your mercy upon us all. Lord, I pray, my God, in no other name but the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Word, Jesus the Truth, Jesus the Way, Jesus the Life, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the soon coming King, Rivio Sacta, Jesus, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Glory be to God, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Father, we just say thank you. We thank you and we bless your name. Hallelujah. So we have two more chapters to go. Please join me again for two more days as we conclude on this book. May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and to grant you his peace both now and forevermore. Hallelujah. Remember, if when we, you started this journey and we spoke about repentance and we spoke about also helping those that are less fortunate, if you pledge to help someone, if God placed something in your mind, please fulfill that which God has placed upon your heart. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just praying openly some of the sentiments that are in the text. Uh, hallelujah. Father, we pray that every blind eyes mighty father god will be open lord god we pray we pray in the name of jesus christ for an opening of every deaf ears my god in the name of jesus god we pray my god that the hold of their minds my god will be broken and that they will have understanding my god and the wisdom my god to choose you lord god over that of the enemy in the name of jesus christ of Nazareth. Father, I pray for wisdom that they be able to distinguish the truth from the lie. In the name of Jesus, my God from Zion, every spirit of deception that is roaming about in this hour, God. Lord God, we bring it down and we bring down its utterance. We bring down those thoughts of deception and we make it subject to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Doubt in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus in the minds of the believer. I cast you out now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Those that my God have, oh God, agreed with these spirits. Lord God, may their prayer right now be that of repentance and fall out of agreement. We fall out of agreement with every spirit of deception, every mind binding spirit, every mind control spirit, every spirit, my God of doubt. Oh God, we fall out of agreement with that spirit now. In the name of Jesus, we decree over our mind that we have revealed Satan, the mind of Christ. Let this mind that was in Christ be in you also. My God and my King, we decree and declare, Lord God, that whatsoever is good, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is pure, my God, those are the things that are upon our minds. In the name of Jesus, my God, we decree and declare that the weapon, the word is a weapon in our mouths. My God, and like a sword, it cuts Rabaka secreted to demons and devils, separating my God asunder that which is not of you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. According to the word, my God, you have said that you have given me power to bind, that is power to legislate. I legislate in the realm of the spirit, even now, my God and my King, that wickedness, my God, is far from me. Lord God, I legislate right now. I am spiritually Jacob. No divination, my God. No divination, my God. No X, no spell, my God, shall come nigh me. We break the whole of darkness over the lives of your people, over their minds, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And that very important prayer. Lord, help my unbelief. My God, help our unbelief. Help our unbelief, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Good night. Good night. God bless you.